Nightmare Reaper is one of those games that is trying to do a little bit of everything in the modern retro boomer shooter kind of market today. And while it certainly has, I think, a really strong start, I feel like a lot of the mechanics and systems that are introduced don't quite sustain the game all the way through to its end. But this is described as a roguelite shooter, which is also part of a platformer, and a shmup, and even Pokemon, and we'll explain that in the next minute. But the game opens up with us fighting demons in various tombs and evil places with all kinds of things trying to kill us. But there is a greater story going on with us trying to figure out why this woman keeps waking up in a mental asylum and a story about having a very destructive and horrific life. And I really like kind of like the asylum setting or the asylum areas as it really kind of gives a sense of horror to the game while letting you be, you know, murdering and killing everything in these shooter sections. Nightmare Reaper is a rogue-like, or we could probably say more of a roguelite style game. Each world or biome is made up of three stages, and those stages have rooms that are pre-made, but then they're stitched together to form that level. And it's your job to get through the level, get to the exit, and move on. Now, where the roguelite elements come in, in is as you play through the game, you will unlock cartridges that are classic video game conventions, including like a Super Mario Bros. 3 style one, where each stage or each challenge in those retro plays unlocks a permanent perk for the shooter aspects. This is where you'll be able to hold on to better weapons, get better drops, improve your health, ammo, and so on. And it's a very ingenious idea. While well, it all kind of matches the theme and the tone of kind of like the retro world and the story that's going on. Now, as with roguelites and kind of ARPGs, you'll fight all manner of enemies. There can be elite variants of those enemies. And weapons will come in different rarities, with the higher rarities having randomly chosen modifiers attached. So you can get a grenade launcher that shoots two grenades instead of one. Guns that can do lightning damage or random bullets and so on and so forth. And the game definitely has a really great feel in terms of going to the levels, killing everything, getting more rewards, rinse and repeat. But as the game goes on and as we get into kind of the back half and final quarter of it, issues with kind of the lack of variance begin to make themselves known. And I feel like the game doesn't have, I guess, enough of blood fuel or murder rage to make it all the way to the finish line. Now, I want to spend the bulk of this review on those points, and we're going to do that after this quick break. And as always, if you're interested in my thoughts on design, then check out my latest offering of books. For entry-level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres with free-to-play coming in 2022. When Nightmare Reaper starts, it certainly does a lot of things really well. All the different weapons have a different feel to them. They have secondary abilities that really pop. Your chainsaw can be used to launch yourself at an enemy and then, of course, chainsaw them. And again, like for the first half of the game, as you're unlocking the different cartridges, as you're seeing more of the persistent elements, Nightmare Reaper is firing on all cylinders. But the issues start to come in with how the level generation works and the lack of, I guess, like moving rewards to keep playing. So let's talk about the level design first. The game has some very annoying tendencies when it comes to level generation. Each level or each biome has, again, preset rooms and preset obstacles, and you'll start to see copies of them very regularly. As you go through, you're going to run into very similar kind of obstacles. There will be doors that require you to hit X amount of switches, kill the enemies, or find a key. Now, the key doors are very apparent. You know, the red door needs the red key. But when you have doors that require either switch hitting or killing all the enemies, this can become frustrating because the game does not tell you what the condition is to open up that door. 
So you can spend a long time wandering around the entire scope of a level trying to figure out, did you miss a key somewhere? Did you miss a switch? Is there an enemy? And the mini map could definitely have used a full map version and even have more points of interest listed on it, such as if you walk past a key or a switch on the wall. And this would definitely stem some of the frustrations as you get later into the game and levels get bigger and you'll start to introduce more rules and conditions for getting through them. Now, when it comes to the enemies, there are definitely, I think, less enemy types than you would expect for a game like this. And while the game does introduce new enemies, they also follow the same basic archetypes of either stand away and snipe or rush you and try and claw you. Elites are definitely the most frustrating aspect of this game. Every elite is a bullet sponge, and you're going to need to have a heavy weapon to be able to quickly kill them. When a enemy has a defense modifier on them, it can take several minutes of just shooting them in the head just to knock them down. While if an enemy has kind of an elemental effect to it and they charge you, it's very easy for the enemy just to do free damage and there's nothing you can do about it. And it can definitely be frustrating fighting them. The weapon designs are all really well done, but because you can only hold one gun at a time and it can take a very long time for you to unlock the hold a level 2 class weapon, it does kind of limit what you can do, and once you find a weapon that really works for you, it kind of makes sense to just hold on to that weapon and not change anything out, which also does kind of hurt the ARPG aspect or even having different builds or strategies. And the final kind of set of levels, they introduce a grappling hook mechanic, which is a lot of fun, but because of the procedural nature, the levels kind of lack a sense of personality to them, as everything is just stitched together. There aren't as many boss fights as you would expect, and even the asylum sections start to wear themselves thin because there's just not a lot that you're really doing or exploring there. I really would have liked that element to be better integrated into the game. All in all, Nightmare Reaper is a great modern retro shooter, but I feel like it's trying to do too much. It's one of those cases where if you really want to dive into the different sub games for the upgrades, there's a shmup one, a Pokemon one, and the Mario one, you have to be in the mood for those specific gameplay loops. Otherwise, they're just kind of superfluous to the actual first person shooter gameplay. If you're somebody who's looking for a high-speed shooter but with a lot of persistence, I would definitely check out Nightmare Reaper. But if you're not a fan of procedural generation or, you know, the RNG-ness kind of taking or having effect of your survival, then this game may not really work for you. But I would like to thank the developers for sending me a press key and check this one out. As always, if you'd like me to go to your game in the future, please get in touch. Come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where some of the art and science of games. And until next time, take care.